Okay, Deborah, you can start with the introductions. Okay, great. Well, welcome to today's um, Access Chat. Today we are really lucky to be talking about a topic that's very near and dear to my heart, draw disabilities. And we have um, Andrea, and I'm going to let him introduce himself, and then we also have Rolando. And then, of course, Antonio from the Access Chat team is here. And Neil was not able to join us today because he's on holiday. I don't know why he can't join us even when he's on holiday, but his wife said no. So, um, so we'll get Neil again on the Twitter chat. But I'm going to turn it over for a moment uh, first to Andre and then to Rolando and let them introduce themselves. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deborah. My name is Andrea Pregel. I'm from Italy, Turin, um, and I am the co-founder and president of Globi, the Global Observatory for Inclusion, together with Rolando. Rolando, you want to say something? Hello, everyone. My name is Rolando Jr. Villamero. I am currently based in Dumaguete City, Philippines, and I'm the vice president and co-founder of Globi, together with Andrea. First, my expertise is inclusive education of children with disabilities, and we have done a lot of projects in the Philippines to ensure that children with disabilities are school and learning. Okay, I, I, I need to uh, I, I, I need to, to ask this Twitter. How did you guys met? So, uh, where in the uh, how how that connection happened? Uh, well, both Roland and I were studying. Uh, we were studying together. We took part in a in a master's program, uh, which is the Erasmus Mundus Masters in Special and Inclusive Education. Uh, it's a project funded by the European Commission, and we uh, managed to study in three different universities in Europe: the University of Roehampton in London, uh, the University of Oslo, and Charles University in Prague. And we were part of this course together. Uh, we were 12 students from. 12 different parts of the world, and we shared this this um, this um, study together. And then, uh, when we were in in Prague, uh, we organized a, a small symposium on the occasion of the International uh, Day of the African Child. And so, uh, we of course we already knew each other at that point, but we started working together. We organized this event together, and and we had this idea in mind. We wanted to do something together, and so we decided to launch Globi, and that's how it started. Okay. And we launched Globi in November, so now it's a very young organization, but um, it's it's really moving fast. No, you were mentioned that there was a group of twelve people, right? And uh, are your guys still in connection? Are you still collaborating, or uh, uh, some of them end up in going in their own way? Uh, what happened out there? Well, I'm not sure who there is a problem, of course. Go, go, Rolando. Go ahead, Rolando. Uh, the, the good question, well, well, I be after the program, it's been discussed that people or the scholars should work with one another and come up with projects, for example. Um, of course, um, these individuals coming from different countries around the world also have their own commitments to their own work or advocacies. So some of in the respected countries now, some are um, Although we still connect on Facebook and um, other online resources or social media, for example. Okay, just, just let, let's, uh, let's just uh, endeavor to stop the, the phone and then we can return back. <laughs> So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I saw him. And I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. Okay, I'm sorry, Antonio. So uh, Rolando <laughs> was saying that you know that there was a group of people working on this project, and you know some of them they they have their own project themselves, and then th that's where we we stop. Can you can you continue with that, Rolando, please? Yes, we're, we're trying our well, best um, as as to connect ourselves. Okay. Go ahead, Andrea. 
Well, as Rolando was saying, um, that it was a very interesting project because, well, it was a good project in terms of studying, but uh, we also met interesting people and we managed to connect quite well and it was really intercultural, so it was a very good experience for us. And of course, when we started Globy, we, we included uh, our colleagues from the course. Uh, some decided to join us, some decided to uh, not to be part of Globy um, at, at that moment. We're still in connection with almost all of them and and some of them are part of Globy and some uh, hopefully will join us later. But we also managed to include um, people from other parts of the world, from other programs, from other uh, backgrounds uh, using our uh, networks and and right now globally is a small organization i would say we have a very small team which is evolving and we're still building the core team but at the same time we have a lot of people supporting from different parts of the world and i think it's a it's quite a beautiful thing uh, uh, uh rolando was was mentioning that you have a, a a space on facebook right So, for, 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 from all the different social networks, what from all of them, yes, what we, do you think is, is that we may consider that is the the easiest one for people to collaborate and communicate? Well, basically, Antonio, the Facebook group, and if we do have some important things to share, we post them there and comment and give their input. Also, most of the time we make an email, especially if you know there's critical communication coming from three universities. All those information are actually shared in email, and so we. Okay, so we're making use of Facebook and email at the same time. Okay, but uh, in terms and Google of, Chat as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of of letting people who, who, with special needs to have access to your content. Uh, what type of work are you doing in order to, to let them access to the, all that information? I think for some reason the communication froze a little bit. Oh. Well, the two main social networks we are using right now are Facebook and Twitter. To say. Um, none of us is is um, a tech guru. So we both have um, a similar background in inclusion and disability and education. And for this re reason, we're trying to help us. But right now, most of the work is done on a voluntary basis. So we're still growing, we're still learning as well. Um, we're using Facebook as a sort of um, a sort of box where we can collect um, or all our contents and can share information. And we we try to use some visual information as well, some um, some images, some videos. And then we are starting to use uh, Twitter uh, to connect more with partners. So I would say Facebook is more for uh, persons to follow us and to just see what we're doing. And we try to use Twitter to connect people. That's actually how we managed to connect with Deborah through Twitter. And and also, as Deborah mentioned, for our campaign, and we're going to talk about that, for our campaign, we're using also videos. And um, we are promoting uh, the campaign through uh, Google Hangouts. And we have a new one coming soon. And I think that's a uh, that's a that's an interesting tool to uh, give people the possibility to see us, to um, to discuss, to have an interesting panel, to have an interesting discussion, maybe to ask questions. And and so I, I think uh, I think we still have to to grow a lot. And for instance, we need to explore more visual um, social networks. We still don't have an Instagram account, but we'll open it soon. And so we're growing a little bit. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. Deborah. Well, I know they also have um, a website where they're um, adding a lot of the information. And um, so I think they're being smart in that they're duplicating information. So they're, they've got it on Facebook, they've got it on Twitter, they have it on their website, and then they're following up with Google Chats um, just to make sure that the word is getting out. And if they're, um, if the, if, it, if Twitter is any indication, uh, they're really getting out there. It, I'm seeing people retweet them, and um, the UN has been very, very engaged no, in retweeting no. and talking about what they're doing. 
Yeah, the no, UN youth right groups, no, the um, UNICEF. Yeah, it's exciting to watch the. It's sort of exploding around them. It is because uh, one of the, the possibility. The, yeah. Exciting. One of the things that we find with Twitter is is the Sorry, from, go ahead, from all the networks is the one that allows more, let's say, self discovery. You know, allows people to you know to discover others in a, in an easy way because it gives you the raw data. Uh, Facebook puts a little bit of a few challenge there. And, and also Google Plus is also sometimes a little bit of a challenge for people who are using special types of software and you know, also it's easy to do searches to Twitter so it facilitates people to discover strangers who are somehow uh, focused on the semen area and having similar conversations. Yeah, it's exciting to see it. It's exciting to see Antonio. Antonio. Yes. Go ahead, Rolanda. Uh, we'd like to emphasize, uh, yeah, we'd like to emphasize, though, with the concept of accessibility, we'd like to emphasize that although Globe at this very moment, our promotions are purely online, ideally, a vision, Globe is also an, in an initiative. And what we're aiming for is that we want to bring Globe to the grassroots communities and to the community level. Because when you talk about the issue of accessibility, not all young people, for example, or people with disabilities have access to the internet. To make sure that whatever we see online virtually is, is reached, is accessible to people who don't have access to the internet. So one of the long-term goals of Globe is to make sure that we go on the virtual atmosphere or the virtual space, and we reach out to the different communities, organize activities there, or so initiative that will encourage participation people who don't necessarily have access to the, the internet. Good point, good point. And, and I would like to add a couple of more things. Um, we have this website, which is www.globi-observatory.org. At the beginning, our idea was to create a platform uh, to discuss and talk and share ideas about inclusion. Uh, now, that idea is still there. We still have this platform and we still publish articles and reportage and, and analysis and, and all this stuff. But that's not any more the main point. We still have the platform, but what we want to do, as Rolando was saying, was to go one step farther. So we want we're we're writing down projects and ideas, and we're going to develop more. And of course, we want to go out. We want to go into the, the real world. But at the same time, we want to use this platform and use the the, potent, the the huge power of the internet to connect people around the world. So on the one, we are a, a legally reg registered nonprofit organization. Uh, we're registered in Turin, Italy. And so we will probably do some local projects here, maybe some other local projects in specific areas where, where we have more people working on it. But at the same time, we want to focus on on advocacy. On this, on this matter, I would like to say two things. The, the name of the project is Global Globi, which is which stands for Global Observatory for Inclusion. Now we're talking a lot about disability because that's our background, but inclusion is much more. So one of our main challenges right now is to um, how can I say is to change the idea that inclusion is just about disability. Very often these two concepts, inclusion and disability, are uh, interconnected, and and people think that that's just about it. But inclusion. I see personal inclusion as the opposite of discrimination. So uh, wherever there is discrimination, we should work for inclusion. So inclusion for, for ourselves stands for disability, but also for LGBT rights, for, for women and men, for children, for elderly, for migration, and so on and so forth. So this is why also the platform is divided uh, and has di different thematic areas we want to work on and also we will work on more projects concrete projects on these different things right now our biggest project the one we're going to discuss about is called draw disability hashtag draw disability and and i think that um you you mentioned something very important it's going viral but i'll make a prediction i think it's going to go even more viral because okay. today we uploaded our gallery online so draw disability rolando do you want to say something about it so just to introduce the concept sure of course what well, disability is one of the pioneer projects of Globi or Global Observatory for Inclusion. And it's basically a global project uh, which allows children from around the world, including young people, to discuss about disability through visual arts. 
So we're encouraging the schools, but we're trying to emphasize that school children should not be the only participants. Those children who are out of school can also participate, including young people and their parents. So it's really a global project, and our aim is to make use of the arts, specifically visual arts, for children and young people to express what they think about disability. And, and this is where a key concept that we were discussing about before, like accessibility, comes into into the game because we chose drawings because they are an international language. They, they know no barriers and drawings from children in Pakistan can be seen by children in the US and they can still understand each other. So that's one thing. And the second thing is that we all, all often think that we need to teach children something or teach um, youngsters something. And of course we, we can. And for this reason, we created some guidelines, some, some activities that teachers can use to, um, to explain disability, to discuss about disability and to empower children on that topic. But on, on the other hand, what we really want is to empower children and youth to draw disability and drawing disability to um, uh, share their own own ideas, to become active global citizens and to have their own saying uh, through their drawing, to, to challenge stereotypes through their drawing. So it's not a, anymore about a one direction thing. We, we are teaching children something, but hopefully they will teach us something as well. Exactly. And as mentioned by Andrea, the hashtag draw disability actually a mean end. And we're looking at different angles where this project would lead to. And aside from raising the awareness of children and young people about the concept of disability, we're actually looking the, at the project as more of a springboard to really measure and assess how people understand disability around the world. You know, we're on the process of developing and finalizing our goals for the post-2015 development agenda. And we're, we're eyeing draw disability as a platform where policymakers are guided on how we can push disability and inclusion forward. It's more of like an assessment of where we are in terms of advocating for the rights of, of persons with disabilities. And you know, in terms of accessibility, we're very proud because one of the issues we had before we really pushed the project forward was how do we include blind children in the process? You know, because, you know, I mean, vision is a problem for blind children and it's it's drawing, it's about visual arts. So the big question we had was how could we encourage blind children to participate in the process and how do we make the initiative more inclusive? And so we decided to make it more, make it more inclusive by allowing blind children to use tactile arts. You know, um, two weeks ago, we organized a draw disability campaign in the Philippines and we invited almost 10 blind children. We invited young people to do a storytelling activity regarding disability. And after the storytelling, we allowed blind children to reflect and we allow them to make use of recycled materials um, like popsicle sticks, used papers, and we even ask them to use natural materials like twigs, leaves, for them to express how they feel about draw disability. So this is one way for us to address the issue of accessibility, and we're really doing our best to involve persons with disabilities in this process because, as the slogan says, you know, this is a cliche, it's nothing about us without us, and we really want persons with disabilities to be on board because at the end of the day, this is what the project is for. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> um, I know that you are including adults with disabilities as well because um, my daughter, Sarah, that um, is an artist in her own right, um, she has Down syndrome but she's 27 years old. So I guess we could still put her in the youth category, but I, I do think it's interesting how you're pulling in um, adults with disabilities into these conversations and letting them participate in, and as you both said, learn from each other. So um, will one of you talk a little bit about that, please? Uh, yeah, we, we're doing that in different ways. Uh, we had, for instance, already a Google Hangout discussion in which we had a person with disability um, interacting with us and sharing experiences. That's one way. And hopefully we will have, a, I'm not going to say anything, I'm just going to say a very relevant um, panelist in our next panel, hopefully. Um, but also we are trying to do it in a different way. 
Okay, so uh, this pro well, can I just say two words on the project because we we started discussing about it without actually introducing it. Yeah. So this project we're talking about is called Drone Disability. It's a global campaign launched by the uh, by Globe, the Global Observatory for Inclusion, in partnership with the United Nations Secretary General's uh, Global Education First Initiative, Jeffy and the Youth Advocacy Group of Jeffy. Um, so, and also we are trying to partner with a number of different organizations because we want to uh, this project to be as uh, wide as possible. So for this reason, we partner at the beginning with a, with a number of uh, organizations such as UNICEF, UNESCO, uh, Educate a Child, Global Campaign for Education, INA, LUMOS. We also um, reached to other strategic partners like Edward School or Women's Tribe or Inclusion International. We're partnering along, around the world with, glo with local partners. We, we, of course, partner with uh, Rue Global Communication. Um, so we are trying to create a network to support this project. Um, and also, uh, the project is, um, um, is trying to reach as many uh, youngsters and children around the world. Of course, we're mainly targeting schools because that's the environment where we should at least find them. And we're trying to interact with teachers and head teachers. Um, and the campaign is open for children and youth from six years old to 17 years old. However, we also want to uh, see, you know, creativity is not just about a quality that children have. Very often, uh, you know, when we grow up, we tend to lose creativity. Or we think we're not creative anymore. But of course, adults can be creative, and of course, um, we want to we want to see that as well. So for this reason, we thought we might want to uh, create a sort of group of draw disability art ambassadors. And, and that's a call we're opening to any artist out there. And of course, uh, Sarah is a, is a wonderful example of that because not only she's an artist, but uh, of course she's a person with disability. She, she's Down syndrome and she did a very beautiful artwork for us. So uh, hopefully that will be visible together with other um, artwork coming from other artists. They will be our ambassadors. So we're reaching out to um, on to adults uh, who are involved in art, who have uh, disabilities, who want to just challenge themselves and show uh, to us what disability is about and want to have their saying through uh, you know, their drawing. So um, our door is open to everyone. You are, you are uh, mentioning that you are also trying to reach people who, who don't have access to the internet. So there's quite a good number of schools, uh, you know, uh, um, around me in Europe, or all over the world. How do you, what type of work are you guys doing in order to to engage with schools that somehow seem to be a little bit silenced in this space? Well, what we're doing to respond to the uh, matter, Antonio, is that we're looking for regional and local partners. Um, so aside from looking into international partnerships like you know we have UNICEF or UNESCO we see that it's very critical for us to work with organizations on the ground because their role in in this process is very important especially that they have access to these schools who don't have access to the internet for example so what we're doing now is that we're partnering with local and regional organizations and they've identified certain schools that they can work closely um, in order to reach more schools, especially those be belonging in remote areas. So what we're saying now, um, Antonio and Deborah, is that the challenge that we have now is not actually on the online promotions. You know, you know, we've been doing a lot of tweets, we've been doing about shares on Facebook, press releases, blogs, and everything. But the challenge that we have now is, as mentioned by Antonio, is how do we reach out and cascade this information to the ground, especially to the schools coming from remote areas. So that's where local partners come in. And that's where, you know, we're, we're looking at assigning people to work as draw disability ambassadors. Like we can mobilize young people who can work on the ground, like really literally going to schools, one school to the other, to make sure that we, we're able to bring this project forward. And just to concretize that, that's why Youth Advocacy Group of the UN Global Education First Initiative, the group we're in part of, is a very critical partner in this because we are young people from 16 countries around the world. And we do have a lot of networks within our own countries, especially schools. So we're trying to do our best to make sure that each member of the youth advocacy group is mobilizing himself 
himself or herself really approach schools, especially those from remote areas, and bring do- draw this disability so we can bring more entries, especially from those marginalized parts of the world. Uh, and I would like to add something just to give the a perception of the local dimension of the project. So as Rolando said, we're trying to reach out to different communities. For instance, uh, we know that there are children in Kibera, the largest slum in, in Nairobi, who are working on drug disability. And we received drawings from China and the US and Italy and the Philippines. And we are starting to put them online. So they will they are visible already and we, they will be more and more visible on social networks. But at the same time, we want to bring these drawings all together. So right, right now we are in a very um, critical moment. Uh, we are at the beginning of March. Uh, the project Drones ability um, will run f- until the ne- until the end of the year at least, and we, we will receive drawings until mid July. However, all drawings received by April the first will be showcased in, in two very important events. We are organizing two um, exhibitions, draw disability exhibition and showcases. One is uh, at the World Education Forum in May 2015 in Incheon, South Korea. And the second one is at a conference of state parties to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, which is in June 2015 in New York. So. Uh, during these events, we, we will have a space in which we will um, have some um, stands and we will, you know, showcase what is uh, what drug disability is about. And of course, we will also showcase drawings from the children. During these events, there will be a, a lot of important people. There will be uh, global leaders uh, and, and advocates for inclusion and disability, and they will be all there. They will be seeing this um, exhibition. They will be seeing these drawings. So hopefully. Um, these drawings coming from every corner of the world will have um, a very uh, critical um, chance, a very important spot, and they will tell something to these global leaders, and hopefully it will be um, a, a true way to connect children and, and you know, very uh, important leaders around the world and somehow to let them have a dialogue through drawings and through art. And uh, how many how many uh, draws are you planning to have on those as exhibitions? Are you planning to do a, Are you going to cho- choose a few of them? What what's the idea there? Um, well, ideally, uh, we are still planning on the final setting of the exhibition. Uh, we will not. Um, how can I say? We will um, showcase them. So we, will, uh, depending on the type of setting we will have. Um, we will uh, give visibility to these drawings, plus there will be some screens, they will, they will be going on the screens. Uh, however, uh, after July, uh, we, when we will stop receiving drawings, there will be some online voting. So we will ask the people around the world to vote the best drawings, and after that we will select the 60 most voted drawings, and we will compose a jury of experts of different fields, and this jury will select the 30 best drawings. And these 30 best drawings will be actually uh, exhibited. They will be in a frame and there will will be a proper exhibition in New York on the sidelines of uh, the UN General Assembly. So they will be the final uh, exhibition of the project and that they will be the winning drawings. But during the first first two events, uh, basically all drawings we will receive, uh, we'll try to give visibility to them. Also, I I want to mention a very important thing. as I say, we're starting to put drawings online today, and as I said before, um, my prediction is that the campaign will go even more viral because right now we've been just sharing ideas and concepts, but right now, from today, we're starting sharing actual drawings, and, and that will be, I think, empowering, and hopefully um, people will retreat and will share these drawings and will encourage others to participate. Um, and one of the things is that not all these drawings are positive, some of them are positive and share a positive message. Some of them do not share a very positive message. Some of them, some of them uh, share a view which is um, of children or adults with disability who are suffering. And that's just fine because that's how children and youth uh, so disability in that specific community, for instance. And that's a very key important point of this campaign. It, it will allow us to discuss about disability, to see how children see disability, youth see disability in their community, what are the main challenges, and this hopefully will help us to discuss a bit more and to find new solutions to, you know, uh, the problems. Uh, uh, no, the, the images uh, are going, and the draws are going to provide some very interesting f- information. Are you planning to write a paper around this?
Well, um, well, what, what I can say is that it's an evolving project. So there is a possibility. Our goal is to have at the end of the year, we launched the project on December uh, 3rd, 2014, which was International Day Persons with Disabilities. And ideally, uh, it started as a one-year project. And at the end of the year, we will have some sort of publication, probably some sort of agendas or book or catalog and something like that. Um, I think we might have, I've, we've been thinking already about it, academic but something you can say about it uh, that, that this campaign can tell us and we can discuss about it so hopefully we'll work on that but at the same time I think there is you know um, um, we should probably push forward the campaign and try to bring it to the next step and not you know just not to finish after one year hopefully we'll manage to continue the campaign later on what do you think Rolando? Exactly. Uh, I'd like to emphasize what Andrea said, that we're really trying to look into sustainable mechanisms. Uh, and one of the ways is that after we receive the drawings, after they're being exhibited in New York, after we have the book, I mean, how do we go back to the schools who participated and empower them to become advocates for inclusion, for disability? So that's what we're trying. But as, 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 as mentioned, earlier this is a very progressive project and we're learning from the process and that's the beauty of of draw disability because at this very moment we have a handful of organizations and one of the expectations we have for these organizations is to actually provide us inputs on how we can sustain the project that should stay for one year so we're trying to get their ideas as well that after 2015 for example we can fur further this project go back to the schools and really conduct more more activities, for example, to sustain what the vision of draw disability is all about. So that's 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 really the, the ideal thing, and we hope to to bring that forward as we go on with, with this project. Uh, yeah. And on that note, if I can, I'd like to add something else. As I said before, we're trying to build a network. So we we came up with an idea, which I think it's a it's a winning idea. It's a beautiful idea, and it engages children and youth around the world, but also teachers and parents, and it, it's really it, it's really global. And, and for this reason, we're looking out, we're reaching out for help. Um, of course, we have some solid base, but um, I think we, we, we have a, a, for instance, we have a tight budget compared to the, the dimension of the project. And at the same time, uh, we are reaching out to as many local organization, but of course we cannot reach them all. So what we are asking here as well is to get engaged, uh, uh, send us a message, call us, uh, send us a tweet, get engaged. If you have any way to help, if you know a school, uh, contact us. We will help you to conduct the workshops in the school. If you know a federation of school, if you have an organization and you can actually reach out to people, if you are willing to sponsor uh, our project or to uh, create a better exhibition or to produce a book or to produce more activities, get in touch with us and let's bring um, this project forward together. Okay. It's, uh, Very well said. Yeah, I so agree with that. And Antonio and Deborah, I have I have to highlight a very important thing in draw disability initiative because the the common responses we get from people every time we promote the initiative is that it looks very tedious, it looks very tiring. You know, that's the usual response that we get from people, especially if if they look at the guidelines for teachers, where you have a lot of information about disability. What we're trying to emphasize here is that it's not really a tedious process. Like based on my experience, for example, I did a draw disability campaign in the schools where I graduated, elementary and high school. Um, the first thing that we're going to emphasize for teachers and those who are interested to join in is that the guidelines for teachers that we sent around is just a guide. That's why it calls guidelines. It's not an absolute document. You don't have to follow everything what's written there. You can come up with your own idea. You can you can modify. You can innovate your own idea on how you can bring this document to your classroom in a much faster in a much more convenient way on the part of the teachers because we understand how hectic the schedules are for teachers especially in public school so in my experience for example i did a for example in the schools where we visited a group of young people did a 10-minute storytelling activity where they they made use of concepts about disability through a bird that broke her wings and that a group of animals helped her go back to her nest 
you know, and it's 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 one way of actually tweaking and making the guidelines more creative and much easier for teachers. So, and it's after that, you just ask the children to draw, get their drawings, and then submit them. So, what we're trying to say here is that draw to submit is actually not a tedious process, and we're encouraging teachers and those who are interested to actually explore the process and learn from it. It's going to be very fun, and it's going to be a very meaningful process. Uh are you are you also planning to somehow to translate those images into text? Um, well, we are are asking uh, if we, on our website there is a dedicated page with, um, uh, for draw disability and also information on how to submit drawings. When we when uh, submitting drawings, we also ask to include some information, which is the name of the author, the age, the school, the country, but also a few lines, a title of the art, the artwork, and um, a few lines of description, just to explain what the drawing is about. Also, because for instance, I conducted a, a draw disability activity workshop in in a first grade elementary school, and actually I'm impressed because they did such an amazing job. And some of the drawings are actually beautiful, but somehow it's understandable that um, you know um, maybe children are not uh, always capable of delivering the message. So for this reason, we're asking to include a few lines, but ideally the, the, the most powerful message would be the drawing. And I'll say something more, actually. I was listening to Rolanda before, and I was thinking to a concept we didn't really explore much, but it, it may be as important as the one we're advocating for, which is the concept of creativity. Um, we always focus on disability on this project because that's the focus, but um, when we discuss about um, education in the past, we, we often agreed, Roland and I, on the importance of changing education systems are, around the world. Of course, uh, you guys are experts in technologies. You, you know that better than us, that it's very difficult to have children sitting in a class and just following you know, the teacher writing on a blackboard for hours when they're living in the age of technology and they're moving all the time. So we really need to re think our idea of learning and education. And, and one of the key points, I think, is creativity. And creativity is at the base of our, uh, it's, it's the very foundation of our project, not just in the drawings, but as Rolando was saying, it's also in the process on how to engage children and youth on how to approach the, the learning activity. I conducted the learning activity, the workshop activity of draw disability, uh, pretending to be an alien. So I um, entered the classroom wearing a uh, really weird uh, tinfoil uh, homemade antenna and, and uh, pretending to be an alien and asking you know, questions to the children about diversity and asking them, uh, I, I took three of them and I put them in line and I asked the other children to uh, spot differences because to me as an alien, all human beings look like uh, the same, so I asked them to uh, pin uh, to to choose selected differences, like the color of the hair, the skin, the height, and then at the end of this process, uh, I showed them some pictures um, of children with disabilities, and we reflected at the end of the process on the fact that disability is just part of who we are and that's just another difference that we have so the main point of all was we are all different and for this very reason we're all equal and to get there i just tried to use some creativity and that's what we are trying to ask teachers and parents and, and head teachers to put creativity not just for this process but for the whole learning um process and, and that's of course something that a lot of teachers around the world do uh, wonderfully but that's what we have to advocate for okay Thank you, thank you, Andrea. Yes, uh, thank you, Rolando and Deborah. We are basically uh, 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 reaching uh, our time. No, we 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 had a, an amazing call here today, but it, it's important to highlight here for those who are listening to us that you know uh, uh, we had a, a few issues during this call. You know, the connection sometimes was a, was a, a bit slow. There was a few disconnections, but this is part of the reality of the internet that we live today. We, are, we have uh, Rolando uh, calling, uh, we are with Rolando that is on the Philippines, Andre in Italy, uh, Deborah is in uh, United States, I'm in Ireland, and this is part of our world. There's, there's nothing we can do here. This is how technology works, so it will improve with time uh, we work. But uh, anyway, it, this is, it's, it's, it's quite worth it if we are able to 
connect with people, share ideas, and be all connected in the, in the same chat. So, thank you so much. And um, I hope everybody joins the uh, Twitter chat um, tomorrow, March 10th at um, 20 GMT, and that is uh, 3 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. We're on Eastern Standard Time now. But what these two gentlemen are doing is very, very important. It's not just about, as they're saying, drawings and creativeness, but it's about changing changing the conversation. It's about truly understanding that uh, disabilities, as Andrea said, it's just part of life. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, there are positive aspects and there's negative aspects. And um, but this is how we change the conversation. And it's very exciting to watch these two young leaders um, do this. And it's going to be very interesting to watch what they do. But I think they're really going to change the world. So I'm really excited to be a small, tiny little part of it. And Access Chat is really, really excited to be featuring you two so early in the game like this. We look forward to coming back in a year and you're probably going to be way too busy to talk to us, but uh, it's very exciting to watch what's happening. <laughs> so thank you so much. I think we will. I think we will have the time. And thank you. Thanks a lot for the for the opportunity to have the discussion. And we're really looking forward to the to the chat. Yes. Thanks, Andrea. Rolando, any last words? Well, this is very interesting. I'd like to agree with Antonio. This is this is how beautiful diversity is. We're very diverse in terms of geography now, but we're trying our best to make this work, just to push inclusion forward. And I look forward to working more closely with you and to those who are listening to us right now. Okay. Thank th you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Antonio, any final words? No, uh, um, uh, no. I, I, I think I already, uh, I already mentioned that it's it's very interesting that we are, today we are easily able to con to connect people through through technology we just need to uh, make sure that everybody is able to have access to, to access and to read what we are doing here in, in in different formats and make this content as accessible as we can okay thank you so much i'm closing down now <laughs>